My Song for Him Who Never Sang to Me by Merritt Malloy. A dime to spend. He loves me. Maybe not with words, and maybe only the way he loves licorice. Still, I'm a nickel candy bar, and he's a little boy. The dime to spend. He loves me. He never has to say it out loud. He loves me by staying with me when all the doors are open, by walking across a room to touch my hair or my face, and by letting go of my hand and not wanting to. As long as we can touch each other with more than our bodies, I'll know he loves me. Maybe not with words, and maybe only the way he loves licorice. Nine zero zero four nine. The loneliest place I've ever been was not when I was alone. It was in a room in West Los Angeles where I was in love with someone who wasn't in love with me. New Year's Day, 1975. Surely my life was run on batteries before you, without a natural source of energy or light. I didn't always want to be the best I could be. I didn't always wake up feeling good. You nourish me. You've cleaned me and restored me. You brought me val you brought value to all that was lost to before me. You've taken photographs of me like I was an event, not just a girl. You make love to my body like it was a vacation you were on, not me. There isn't a new way of saying I love you. I can only do that by staying with you, by taking care of you and me, maybe by giving you gifts like honesty and understanding in the rest of my life. We're a Valentine, you and me, the kind that never happens and has. Gertie. The years will take part of him from me. Some of him will fall off of me, naturally, like leaves. In time, some of him will turn into other men and later to lines below my eyes. I'll lose a lot, but just the same. I know I'll keep the sound of him calling my name. Human Subways There are places within a man no woman could ever know. At the bottom of himself, some more broken faces and dreams has nourished since he was wide-eyed and ten and believing in everything. Tears can't always fall from eyes, and some things are just too deep or quiet to be talked about, maybe only thought about. When he's alone on a plane or looking out a win any window, if you love him, let him go to those places within himself where he can never take you, and where you must never ask to go. Raggedy Ann No one smiled at me today. I guess they know he's gone. For him. He's asleep now, enclosed in the only freedom he knows, an unconscious sanctuary that unites one day with the next, the fragile province of a mind that was a so little shelter and I love him so I did not mean to come this far I've learned to love the sound of him calling my name waking to the feeling of his body against mine he is so familiar to me his arms are like my home still I love him enough to leave him alone tonight we try to say it out loud but the words seem to hit upon our faces like small stones. Feelings, unedited, ran underground in us. Our eyes became transparent, and we were afraid. The terror of maybe not being together anymore carried its own justification. I did not mean to contaminate his life with my own confusion, to allow his need for me to encourage the collective myths little girls are fed for breakfast. I did not unite with him so that he must divide himself. He only meant to love me. He did not mean to come this far. 
I believed in Cinderella. I even looked for magic dragons in my Nana's yard. I grew up believing. He grew up trying not to. And we lived long enough to know that as much as I had been deformed by fantasy, he had been mutilated by reality. We can translate our silence now. We know what it means. Feelings that we kept sealed and beyond each other's reach and threatening. But defined and honest. We don't know yet what parts we'll play in another's life. But we've come a long way together trying to find out. Together or alone, the decisions are beginning to reverberate like noise ripening. Our appetites were formed before we knew what we needed, and our experience together in a prism through which we see everything differently now. But are we truly different? Did we escape the pollution of public opinion against the cultivation of forever? Do we have enough respect and trust in one another and in ourselves? Do we have enough life to exchange, enough love to pay for what we want? We do love each other so, but we do not mean to come this far. Transition. He's falling asleep. It was all I could take of goodbye. September 18th, 1974. I pulled away from him so slowly, like a band-aid off a wound. One by one, I could feel the circuits breaking, slowly disconnecting us, like a slowly motion instant replay on a Sunday afternoon. A face I once loved became unfamiliar to me today. A body I once hid against in bed from the world became tired and unresponsive. It took hours to travel from the couch to the leather chair where I had left my coat. There were pieces of him stuck to me all over. I knew if I could make it through the door, I could explode alone. On the sidewalk to my car and inside a block away, I could scream with my windows up until it was safe to go back to the world. One by one, I saw the frames go out of focus and all the love in the world won't bring us home. Cause home after all, was just another word for us. And we could only be us in a photograph that someone could have taken last Christmas if they had known. Cinderella. If my eyes are bright for him, it is your son. And if my body is well rehearsed, its life is your life. If my hair is long and he gets lost in it, he may find you there. And if my babies are his, they are yours. For so much a part of me is you, that I was born with your face on my eyes. My song for him who never sang to me. Waking in the morning to touch of Gertie's hands on the 16th floor. You know I'm not that high anymore. Not that it matters now, but I was 16 then, he was 35. I was brand new, squeaky clean, from parochial school and canopy beds. He fell in love with me, not in the way men fall in love with women, but in the way little boys fall in love with little girls. He brought me strawberries, he gave me vitamins, he gave me time, he let me cry. Everything was the first time, again and again. He sang songs then into microphones and not to me. He sang to a lady somewhere who never sang to him. All through the spring of that year we celebrated ourselves, spread our feelings on New York streets like graffiti. And then in July, he got into a cab and left me there, like a rainy picnic. Even after I had loved and been loved by others, I could still hear the sound of him not being there. It's ten years later, and now I sing songs into microphones, and not to you or me. I sing my songs for him, who never sang to me. Wolf Story There are words I've saved... Words I don't want to use too much because they might wear out. I save some words mostly because there are days when I can't stay kissed. Days when all my confidence wears off, when I'm prowess. Just have to, just have to have more of you to fill me in. Hold me. Area code 213. 
I don't know when I stopped calling him. Maybe it was the first time I went to the phone and I couldn't remember the number. In retrospect, we were sharing time and life and tender things that people keep to give away in secret rooms. We were only playmates sharing more than toys, still just walking along, glad to be together and never really thinking about the role we have in each other's life. I don't know when I started to run or why he chose to let go of my hand and stay behind. I only know we had a sharing when we walked together and I chose to run ahead. The lowest common denominator. Love does not live in the streets unless the streets are your home. Breath does not mean you're alive unless you are so little alive you have no bread to fill your mouth or mine. Life isn't always a game unless games are your life. Love does not live in the streets unless the streets are your home. Broken connection, he said, he called me soon. When did we stop laughing? Wrong reason. It is not always the absence of love that makes me seem alone. Often it's been too much love given to me by the wrong people for the wrong reasons that keep me here gladly alone rather than have the life sucked out of me by the violent needs of other minds and bodies. That does not mean that I'm not grateful but I am sad, not to be able to put my arms around those who truly loved me and give them something more than polite indifference. Oh, how I tried. I think they should know I tried and choose to be alone rather than wrapped in, my, in arms I can never need. Poverty. You knew my name. You knew my face so well became your own. And when you reacted to me, you reacted it to yourself. I was the right hand that shook the left. Hands of the same person do not greet one another. You saw us in the same body, of the same mind. We had been together so long, we had joined entirely. Yet, you wore me as a coat. I covered you without reward, that you could walk away from me and leave me on the edge of a chair. Is your life in design? Leftovers. The way he turns, the way he gives me words to go to sleep. Did he inherit moments from other times, another face or mine? Surely he must have learned how to love me by loving someone else. Why, how empty of me to be so full of you. Away home. I write a lyric for people who need words to nourish love. But when I think of him, I remember Dr. Lyon's tooth powder and white bathrooms. I remember the gray line of his back and the smell of the bed after he left it. Of all the places I've been in my life, his body was the most inviting. He tra we traveled each other. We never-ending words or eyes or airplanes how can I spit out in a in a proper poem the way it really is maybe love is only hope of finding a way home to the gray line of his back arms are the best thing to have around you rest in pieces most moments, once predictable, now crumble like crackers. My poor friend, how did we get to where we are? We had invested in so much love to return with nothing. Etc. I do remember him. Every day I remember less than I've forgotten. 50th and Lexington. 
There's an apartment somewhere in New York. It's quiet now, but once in April, it was full of suitcases and love. I never belonged there. I was always going home. But of all the addresses I've had in my life, I can only say I lived in two rooms. For one time in April, in New York City, a long, long time ago. If you're with someone you love, tell them. Valentine. Symphony in P flat. There are some things I meant to say to you when we were old. Not just because we may not grow old together, but because we may not grow old at all. You're so much more important to me than any work I'll ever do. And just so you know, I would have rather been your lady than anything I'll ever be. And just in case you ever think nobody does, I love you. Portions of why. We stayed together as long as we could that Sunday. Somehow knowing we didn't want to leave one another was enough. Summer 1972. If there is a time when I'm alone again, covered only with hands that can never reach me, there is a time without him, a time without hope of his ever coming home. I could not cry because he's gone. I could only be grateful that he had been there. A separate unity. There is a way, a kind of separate unity that keeps people together alone. I am not his wife, yet we live in the same house. I bring him fresh fruit and Hershey bars and onions and eggs in the morning. We smell like coffee together. He touches me awake and loves me to sleep. He comes home at night without having to. He is free and so am I. Love does not imprison us. It, let, it lets us go. Sometimes I feel as though I need to be his wife, to have his baby in his name, to have some tangible evidence to publish our feelings, to show the world how beautiful we are. Still, it's far more peaceful and, and infinitely more secure, knowing we are together because we want to be, not because we have to be. There is a way, a separate, kind of unity that keeps people together alone. High mass. I think of the way you moved to me, the patient way you brought me with you to climb. I guess it only happens like that once in a lifetime. The way we opened up to let each other in and the way we closed again. Like petals, not like people. We were there, you and I. I wonder if we'll ever climb that high again. Atrophy. He's away from me now, not in space but in time, and yes, I'm lonesome, but not for him, only for the way he made me feel. I wonder if skin has a memory as well as the mind. I can't remember what he looks like anymore, only the way I felt when he touched me. There was a time when I loved him so much, just the air would hurt me. It was frightening to need someone that violently, but I'm finding that it's even more frightening not to feel that way anymore about anyone. Metamorphosis. Walking with him is like being born happy. Slowly coming out of sleep like a blind child coming out of darkness, like a flower blossoming in my own time and quietly ripening with consciousness. Waking with him is more like birth than anything I can remember. Roots. The day that Molly was born. The day that Molly was born was a celebration of feeling that afternoon when they brought her to me for the first time, when I put her to my breast and let this hungry stranger feed upon me. Her fat little hands grabbed my flesh with such violence. I did not know I could be so afraid. Later, when she was sleeping on the pillow beside me, I searched her naked body for some familiar flesh and discovered the tiniest valley in her chin and felt the one in mine. Early the next morning at dawn, the lights went on in the sterile hallways outside. I was awake hours before 
I could hear the rubber soles of the nurses squeaking into rooms to moaning mothers encouraged by tradition to smile. My lights were already on. My hair was tied back with a ribbon like an advertisement in a baby magazine. Knowing she could only feel me and not experience my face, I took a chance on Molly being uniquely aware and a small round nurse with a brand new permanent wave rushed in with a blanket full with brand new noise. I remember how foreign it seemed. It was like a scene from a post-war movie. But when I saw her face, it was so natural, like meeting an old friend in a faraway place. We grabbed for one another simultaneously, and suddenly we were alone and quiet. I pulled the ribbon from my hair. I turned out the lights. I knew her hands by now, and I wasn't afraid anymore. PJ and Nana. Nana was half Gracie Allen, half Harper's Bazaar. She wore Argyle socks and silk Christian Dior. Everything she planted grew strong especially her children. They say she had a green thumb, but I never saw it. Arthritis redesigned PJ's tortured hands, and I'd stare at the railroads of veins with my cruel seven-year-old eyes and forget the wonderful tapestry of his face and the splendid rush of feeling as I moved towards his chair. The last time I saw them together, they looked more alike than different, as though each had finally succumbed to the influence of each other. What an exaggeration of love two people waking up together for 60 years. Audition, a letter to his children. I've been forced upon you, like a, like a dress you. Maybe not 